Hi everyone, and welcome back to Our Writing Guy. In the year 2021, we rarely hear the name Parker 51 thrown around in a positive light, mostly because of people's expectation of its recent re-released model. So what makes the original so alluring to collectors and vintage pens enthusiasts alike? And what did the re-release do wrong? The Parker 51 was introduced in 1941 after a 10-year research and development period. In the name itself, the model was aiming high. Be a pen that's so popular and so technologically advanced, it was said to be 10 years ahead of its time. As for this example, the cap was made with their own lustreloid material with a matte finish and still keeps its shine after decades sitting in the box. The section and barrel is injection molded, but the plastic still keeps its color and no one would think this is a 60-year-old writing instrument. At this point, one would think, this is just a run-of-the-mill fountain pen, so what's the hype about it anyway? The nib, instead of being shown off in the usual look at me, I'm 14 karat gold fashion, is hidden under the section and for a good reason. It is to limit the contact with the outside air and thus reduces evaporation of the ink. It gets even better as the nib and feed are connected to a collector and a breeder tube to maintain its consistent ink flow and allows the filling mechanism to work more efficiently. The early generations of Parker 51s were fitted with their signature vacuumatic filling system. These are so much fun to use and to admire, but as time goes on, there was a need for faster drying ink, and newly developed inks were so corrosive they destroyed these vintage celluloid vacuumatic pens in a matter of weeks. Parker had to find a solution, the introduction of the aerometric filler. These are fitted with ply glass sacks that could withstand the hazardous inks and they are so good most of the vintage Parker 51s found today on eBay wouldn't need a replacement and can still be used as is for quite some time. To top it off, the pen was completed with a 14 karat gold nib that doesn't offer a lot of line variation but makes up for it with reliability and ready to go every time you pop the cap. It was sold starting from the $12.50 mark and in modern day value, this is about more than 200 US dollars. That's quite a large sum, but think of it as your mobile phone. You need one to sign contracts, to write letters, to doodle, or even to bullet journal. Who knows, but it was the tool of the time. It was so ahead of its time, while the competition were still struggling with their lever filler and pistons, Parker was doing their own thing. It was so good that it was the most sold fountain pen in the previous century and still to this day, there are so many of them in the used market that Parker would have to think of some way to create the next generation of Parker 51 users, right? However, fast forward to the modern day, instead of getting a pen that would revolutionize the writing instrument industry once more, we get something a bit, shall I say, mediocre. Of course, the changes are theirs to make, but some of them were quite questionable to say the least. To the enthusiast's eyes, the new Parker 51 were so par to the things Parker could do later, and to the newcomer, there are better options to consider. If you are a new fountain pen user, acquiring a reissued Parker 51 wouldn't totally ruin the experience for you as you are getting a decently made pen by the brand. However, if you were to go for a vintage model, they would certainly last you a lifetime to come while offering you a wonderful daily writing experience. Do you have one of these Parker 51s? Do you prefer the vintage or the reissued model? Let me know down in the comment section below. Vintage pens are surely a challenging venture, and if you would like to see an alternative to vintage fountain pens, check out this video right here in the corner. For socials and written version of this review, please check out the description below and head over to awritingguy.com. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.